Ladies and gentlemen, I am delighted to be here today. I'm pleased to be here with my former colleague, Governors. Governor Romer, uh, I'm delighted to be with, with you. And to my friend, Jim Geringer, I was thinking as I sat on the stage, you couldn't see it, but I could. Governor Geringer is a Wyoming cowboy, and he's got his boots on. That's the Secretary Page. One day, Governor Garrigan and I were in the state of Vermont, and we were at an event they called the Taste of Vermont, and we had a chance to move around a park and get different samples of food. And there was a Ben and Jerry's ice cream. And we were standing there. Governor Garringer had his dress, black jeans on, a pair of cowboy boots, a leather vest, and a cowboy hat. A woman from Vermont walked up to him and said, why are you in costume? <laughs> to which he replied, <clears throat> Ma'am, in Wyoming, this is business casual. <laughs> Today, I want to echo the comments of my colleagues in speaking to the theme of let your brand be competency. On July 27th of this year, the Olympic torch will be lighted in London, England. Uh, you'll be interested to know that Western Governors University is going to be represented on the United States team by Shantae Lowe, who will compete in the women's high jump. Uh, Shantae is... Uh, <laughs> Shantae is very typical of WGU students in many ways. Uh, she is a wife. She's a mother of two children. She's uh, 28 years old, and in addition to her day job of comparing for, pre preparing for the Olympic Games, she is studying in a master's degree program to become a math teacher. Now, just do the math on this. Standing only five foot nine, she recently made an American track and field record by jumping six foot nine and a half inches. Wow. Now, President Mendenhall, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure, but I, I think if there was a competency demonstration in the women's high jump, I think Shantae has passed it. <laughs> in fact, someone suggested to me that uh, it would be remarkable if WGU could add an Olympic medal to its still undefeated football team. <laughs> The high jump is actually a quite convenient metaphor on a subject that I'd like to discuss today. I want to address the uniqueness of the competency-based degrees that each of you will be formally conferred today or in just a few moments. I want to assure you that, and help make, I want to assure that you understand what it is that distinguishes your degree from those universities that might have a longer history, might have a better known brand, and to challenge you to make your brand competency. Making your brand competency will assure you, it will allow you to know that you're part of, as was referred to earlier, you're part of a historic movement in higher education because WGU is pioneering a vital movement in American higher education toward measuring competency, not time. In 1961, Dick Fosbury was a sophomore at, uh, at Medford, Oregon, a sophomore in high school. Like Shantae Lowe, he had aspired to be a high jumper. Now, the, the problem was uh, that, that, sh that uh, Dick Fosbury uh, couldn't get into the meets because he couldn't jump the beginning height of five feet. So he began to experiment with other methods. Now, traditionally, uh, high jumpers have used a technique they call the, the straddle method or the western roll. Uh, jumpers throw one leg over the bar and then their, their body follows as they roll face down. The straddle method just didn't work for Dick Fosbury. There were too many moving parts in his lanky body to coordinate all at one time. So he started to experiment with other methods. Gradually, he adopted a technique that, at first, people scoffed at. 
He would jump into the air, and leading with his head, bowing his back, he would cross the bar, kicking his legs over at the very last minute. One of his critics said that he looked like an airborne seizure. <laughs> now, innovators will always have critics, but despite their criticism and their scoffs, Dick Fosbury persisted, and like many individual sports, the rules in high jump aren't all, are, are fairly simple. There's no rule about how a person crosses the bar, only that he crosses the bar, and the person who crosses at the highest level wins. Now, there's no points for form, there's no, time for, no, uh, there's no points for time spent practicing, only competence. Despite encouragement from his coaches to use the more traditional methods, he began to produce results. Not only did he start qualifying for the meets, he started winning them. In his junior year, he broke the high school record in his school, jumping six foot three inches. The next year, he was second place in the state, winning with a height of six, six feet five and a half uh, inches. His technique uh, did, not make, uh, did not match the status quo, but competency was his brand. After graduating from Medford High School, he went to, the, went to Oregon State in, in Corvallis. In 1968, the NCAA Track and Field Championships were held 50 miles south of here in Provo at Brigham Young University. My father and I sat in the stands and we were fascinated to watch this young Dick Fosbury. In that 1968 NCAA track meet, he won the national championship with seven foot, two and a, and a half inches. A few months later, he was in the 1968 Olympics in Mexico City. He took the gold medal that year with a, an Olympic record of seven feet four and a quarter inches. In addition to competency being his brand, so was Olympic medalist. The criticism stopped, and it was replaced more by admiration in the world of, the high, of high jump innovation, and they began to emulate him. Four years later, in the Munich Games, 28 of 40 jumpers use the Fosbury method. Of the 36 Olympic medalists in the event from 1972 to 2000, 34 used what had become known as the Fosbury flop. At first, he wasn't taken seriously. Now the entire world has adopted his methods. Why? Because high jumping, as well as life, is about competency and competency ultimately wins. Let competency be your brand. Today you'll receive a diploma from WGU. Like Dick Fosbury's revolutionary methods in the high jump, WGU is reshaping the way higher education will be conducted in the future. WGU, as has been indicated, was formed by 19 governors from states that had a view that the traditional tools of higher education, the traditional economic model of higher education was unsustainable. Our worry collectively was not shared by many in the academic community. In fact, it had, but we have since been vindicated, and I might say uh, roundly by t what has been 15 years of double-digit tuition increases, soaring to uh, student debt loads, and now a conga line of states that are beginning to limit student access as they struggle to afford the systems with massive fixed overhead costs. These 19 governors did not form WGU to replace the standing systems of higher education that serve our people so well, but rather to supplement them and to serve as evidence of two very important and powerful revolutionary principles. The first that pr the principle is that higher education should measure student competency rather than advancing students through an accumulation of credit that measure time in an academic system. At most institutions, as all of you know, students are awarded three hours or five hours of academic credit based on time. When they get enough of the credits, they're awarded a degree. Time-based academic credit systems have become a form of currency that universities price at premium prices based on either scarcity that they create or a brand that they cultivate. Such arrangements often hide the institution's true quality or lack thereof. 
Frankly, it also at times obscures the quality of education that a faculty member provides or the amount of learning that a student actually does. Each of the founding governors of WGU had many fine institutions and universities in their states, but none of us had any way of knowing which one provided the best value. Oh yes, I could tell you which one was the hardest to get into. I could tell you which one cost the most, but I could not tell you which one was the best. At most universities, when the provost stands and ceremonially can, uh, recommends graduates to the Board of Trustees, they're essentially declaring that the graduates have achieved the necessary credit hours. Today, when WGU di uh, diplomas are dispensed to you, you are receiving a warranty, a warranty not just to you but to the world, that you have mastered very specific and necessary skills to be considered competent, and that competence is your brand. Your mentor has been less concerned about how you gained the required mastery, but took great care to assure that you possess the necessary competence. During the last eight years, when universities have averaged double-digit infl uh, double inflation in their tuition, WGU tuition has not increased. This is in part because the business model that WGU uh, uses allows the addition of additional students at dramatically lower costs. It means that in many states, the student tuition at WGU is only a third one-third of the tuition charged by other universities. In the past 15 years, just 15 years, because competency is our brand, WGU has been, has been built into a national, a national university. This year we will reach 40,000 students. The entire university was built on a $42 million capital investment. That's less than a modest-sized classroom at any other university, or in many cases, a third of what we spend for an average high school in America today. And an entire university with 40,000 students that will grow to be more and more on a third of that. In just eight years, WGU has become the largest educator of math and science teachers in America. Someday, I predict that will be true for training nurses as well. In an economy where education is the keystone to economic prosperity, states will inevitably begin to gravitate toward efficiency, toward competency. This is the reason that WGQ continues to grow at more than 30 percent a year. State universities in Arizona and Wisconsin are now utilizing the competency model. State versions of WGU have been opened in WGU Indiana, WGU Texas, WGU Washington, and they will be joined in the future years by many more states. Now may I just close by saying that a university and its students are forever co-branded. And so today I say, let us be competent. Let us honor competency. Let us encourage competency, and together, let our brand always be competence. Thank you.